This is a supplement to mean time to fail and reliability. Your peers, actually all of you, has very impressed how good the work, the quality of work and effort in teaching each other was this semester, and I really am grateful. Uh, and hopefully you guys all gained from that. But I want to add a supplement because today one of your peers asked me a really good question and showed me that the correlation between the skills and the book, uh, again, is a little bit lacking. So I wanted to go over it so that you guys can better understand. So the example your peers went through with you in class is pulled up here on the screen. And it is of um, MTTF, right? And so just to review real quick, the book right here right, talks about what MTTF is and how it relates to annual failure rate or um, uh, an average over some amount of time. And then it goes through this example. The slides also that we went through in class were very brief, but some useful information here where it talks about relating MTTF, MTTR, and then mean time between failures, which is just the sum of MTTF and MTTR. And so availability is the same as MTTF over mean time between failures. So um, in the equation that they go through in the book, it's a little different than the skills. So let's talk about the one in the book here real quick. This is the same as I went over with your peers, and uh, they went over with you, but I'm just going to do this so you have a level place for understanding. So in the example here, right, they give an MTTF with an hour of 1 million hours, and uh, the scenario is a 50,000 server warehouse scale computer right with two disks per server right so some of the first easy math is how many disks are there since the disks are what we're interested in here which is a million hour, hours MTTF so two times 50 obviously 100,000 disks right and we went over this in class briefly too but long story short as it says here you would think with a million hour MTTF that if it's 114 years it's very unlikely you'll have a failure but when you spread that it's a mean out amongst 100,000 servers it's actually opposite and so it asks you, use AFR, annual failure rate, to calculate how many disks we would expect to fail per year. Well, how do you come up with an annual failure rate? Well, you, it's just a ratio, right? So since our MTTF is in hours, we need to put the, um, uh, the ratio in hours so that the units divide out. So how many hours are there in a year? 8,760. And then we just create a ratio out of that. So there's a 0.87% um, likeliness that a disk will fail in a single year. Okay, that's how mean failures can be spread out over time. Well, with 100,000 disks, now you can just take that 100,000 times 0.876, and obviously you're just moving it over three zeros. You get 876 disks that fail per year on average, which divided over a year is roughly two disk failures per day. The text also gives another useful equation here of total availability, which is MTTF over uh, MTTF plus MTTR, which is the same as mean time between failures we already talked about. Okay, but the reason I want to record this video real quick is because the examples, uh, the skills are a little lacking because they ask the question in the other direction. So, for example, how many days and hours does a test of 60,000 cooling fans have to run before the first failure guarantee to guarantee a mean time to fail? And your peer made a good point. He's like, I don't understand the guarantee, right? Well, this kind of gets into probability stuff a little bit, right? Well, in the book, right, when we calculated the percent kind of probability of failure here, right, it was 0.876%. So that's a very low statistical likeliness that it's going to fail in a single year, okay? for any single disk. When that's spread out over 100,000 disks, it's significantly larger. But the point is here, this is not a guarantee, right? This is much less than one, okay? There's a whole bunch of stats stuff we can talk about here. I won't talk about it. So uh, here's the point. This is 0.876%, so it's not even 1% likeliness, okay? So what is going to be a guaranteed likeliness? Well, 100% or one, uh, mathematically represented as a guaranteed likeliness. So you can set up the same equation and kind of work backwards, right, from what you're given. So, for example, <clears throat> I'll use my highly technical uh, whiteboard here. So, paint program, right? So before, what we did is we said some amount of time, right, over the MTTF, right, 
times the number of hardware items, right? Let's say hardware, right? Equal the percent likeliness, okay? So we can, and this is simplified, keeping it out of all of the minutiae that we can get into with failures, but this is what they did, right? So you, what you saw a second ago was in one year, and keeping the units the same, I think it was roughly 8,760 hours, over a million our MTTF, right, times however many, you know, the 100,000, I'll just put 100K, okay? 100K gave you that, you know, final of 876 per year because this was the, the ratio measurement you put in. So you can work this the other way. So when you want a guaranteed fail, you just set your percentage now to 1 because you want it absolutely to fail. So that's the same as 100% uh, guarantee. Okay, and then you can set up your equation. Well, you don't know the time. That's what this question is asking, right? In the way that this is set up, it's asking how many days and hours, right, does a test take to guarantee one fail if we're trying to obtain this MTTF? So that's our goal MTTF. So we put that down here. I think it's 1,300,000. Yeah, 1,300,000. Hundred thousand, okay, and we don't know how long. That's what we're trying to find. And then, how many hardware items do we have? We've got sixty thousand. Okay, this is very simplified, but it's pretty late in the semester at this point, and I don't want to overwhelm you guys. Okay, well, this just becomes a ratio right here, right? Because sixty thousand times x over one million three hundred, you can just separate this out. So this is equivalent to sixty k right over. Uh, 1,300K, uh, I just dropped three zeros for each of these, that's all I did, right, times X, okay, equals 1. And now I can just divide that, right, so again, highly technical means here, maybe I'll use MATLAB just to be sure. So 60, 1, 2, 3. 3 divided by 1, 3, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3 equals 0 0.0462. What the heck does that mean, right? Well, that's our ratio, okay? But, um, and I didn't put units on this, right? This is the number of items on this side. This is hours here. And we're going to find out it's going to result in hours, okay? And so, I'll leave it at that for now. And so, um, Dividing out this ratio, right, we get 0 0.46, 0 0.046, I think, 0 0.0462. So 0 0.0462 units per hours, right, <clears throat> uh, times x equals 1 or 100%, right? So now we can just divide that out. Let's just divide this. It's just pure algebra at this side. Point. So what's 1? 1 divided by 0 0.0462, right, is 21.645 hours. 0 0 0.0462, 21.6450 hours for that many units, right, uh, for 30,000. So that's per unit in this case because we divided that out, okay? So then you can just check that with the skills. I think that's about what they arrived at. Yeah, roughly 21 hours, you can see right here. So that's kind of how to work that backwards. Hey, just an FYI, you know, the way that the Hamming code question is asked is almost like, uh, maybe almost identical to the way it's written in the skills, so might want to review that also. All right, cheers.